Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the 2021 mock paper. Uh, this is paper one, question one. So it's asking us to solve the following simultaneous equations. So the first thing we're going to do is label each equation, equation one, equation two, and equation three. Now, we want to make two more equations. So we're going to choose, you can choose any two equations, but I'm going to choose equation one and equation two. So then we have to choose a variable to eliminate. I'm going to choose Z. So we are going to have to multiply the first equation by three so that the two Z coefficients are equal but opposite. Okay, so then all we have to do is go through and add all the terms together. These two cancel out. Okay, and now we have equation four. And we're gonna make one more. So for this, I'm going to choose equation two and equation three. So equation three is a bit tricky because we have these two um, fractions. So what we're gonna to want to do is find a common denominator. And if we multiply these two together, we're gonna see the common denominator is going to be 12. So because of this, we're going to multiply everything by 12. So we're going to see that that is 12 over four x plus two times 12 over three y. Twelve divided by four is going to be three x. Uh, two times twelve, twenty-four divided by three is going to be eight y plus twelve z. And then twelve by five point five is sixty-six. Okay, so this is our new equation three. So again, we want the we want to cancel out the two z's. So for that, we're going to multiply equation two by four, so that both of the z coefficients will be twelve. And then again, we add everything together, so that'll be seven x minus twelve y these two cancel out, is equal to 50. And that is equation five. So now we're gonna to want to take equation four and equation five and choose another variable to eliminate. Um, I'm going to choose to eliminate the two x's. Okay, so now what we want to do is multiply equation four by seven, which is the coefficient of the x on equation five, and then multiply equation five by 10, by the same logic. And just to make sure that these cancel out because they have to be of opposite signs, we're going to change all of the signs in the equation. So that means these two will cancel out. This added together is 169y and then this is minus 507. Then you simply divide everything across by 169. And then you get the answer for y is equal to minus three. Okay, so we have one of our answers, but we need to get the other two coefficients as well. So what we're going to do is choose either equation four or equation five. Um, I'm going to choose equation four and sub back in the answer we have for y is equal to three here. So that'll look like this. Then you simply multiply it out, bring it across. And then divide everything by 10 and you will get the answer of x is equal to two.
Now all we need to do is find the z answer. So then we're going to choose one of our original equations. I'm going to choose equation 1 because the coefficient of z is just 1. And we're going to sub back in the answers we have for x and y. So then that'll look like this and we simply multiply everything out. And you get the answer of z is equal to 7. And there we go. We've solved the equation for all three variables. Okay, so now we're going to move on to part B, uh, where it's asking us to find the solution set for the following inequality. So because one of the x's is a denominator, we need to multiply both sides by the square of the denominator. So then the equation should look like this. Now we're just going to multiply everything out. And now, as you can see, there is a 6x on both sides, so that'll cancel out. And now we simply want to bring all of the terms onto the other side. So then it should look something like this. Now we want to solve this quadratic equation here. So to do that, we're going to multiply these two together. So that's going to be 1 times 21, which is 21. And the factors of 21 that we'll add together to give us 10 is 3 times 7. So then we'll simply put them in like this. and then solve the equation as normal. Okay, so now, if this were a normal quadratic equation without the inequality, we would have the two answers of x is equal to minus seven and x is equal to minus three. But because this is a inequality, we need to find the solution set. So the simplest way to do this is to draw a graph. Now, because the coefficient of the x squared term in the original quadratic equation here was positive, the graph is going to be u-shaped. And now, if we draw in the x and y axis, really roughly, it doesn't have to be very accurate at all, we can see that the minus three will be here and the minus seven will be here. Now, in the equality, we want to see where it is greater than zero. So that'll be whenever it is above the x-axis. Therefore, we can see that the answer will be whenever x is less than or equal to minus seven, and also whenever x is greater than minus three. And then you have that part solved. And finally, part C. This is asking us to solve the equation of 3 to the power of 2x plus 1 minus 28 multiplied by 3 to the power of x plus 9 is equal to 0. So what we're going to want to do first is simplify down this quite complicated indice here. So if you look at page 21 of the log tables, there are some indice and log rules. And we're going to use two of these rules to simplify down this complicated number here. And those two rules are a to the power of p multiplied by a to the power of q is the same as a to the power of p plus q. And then also a to the power of p to the power of q is the same as a to the power of p times q. So then, from the first rule, we can see that 3 to the power of 2x plus 1 will be equal to 3 to the power of 2x multiplied by 3 to the power of 1. Then we can also see from the second rule that 3 to the power of 2x would be equal to 3 to the power of x squared. 
Therefore, we can put that all back in here and see that 3 to the power of 2x plus 1 is equal to 3 times 3 to the power of x squared. Okay, so now we're going to put that back into the original formula. And then to simplify things even further, we are going to let 3 to the power of x equal y. So as you can see, this is just a normal quadratic equation. So we're going to solve it in the way that you would solve any other quadratic equation. So first, multiply 3 by 9, which will give you 27. And then the factors that will come together to give you minus 28 will be 1 times 27. So then you put them back into your equation like this, and then you solve as you would any other quadratic equation. So now we have two answers of y is equal to a third and y is equal to nine. And now don't forget that we are trying to solve for x. So we're going to sub it back in. We know that y is equal to three to the power of x. Now going back to our log rules, we know that when a to the power of x is equal to y, then the log of a y is equal to x. And now all you have to do is put that into your calculator. So you can see there in our first answer, x is equal to minus one. And then in our second answer, x is equal to two. And there you go, that's all of question one finished.